skin, big bandage. Everyone, it's Samantha, aka Vegan Acne Sufferers. Today's video is about a very important topic, one that I don't think gets enough attention when it comes to skincare. And it's actually something that can undermine your entire skincare routine if it isn't addressed. I'm talking about a damaged moisture barrier. And you might be thinking, what the heck is a moisture barrier? The moisture barrier can actually go by several names, which might be a little confusing for some people. It can be called the acid mantle, the skin barrier, but the technical name for it is the stratum corneum. And it's basically the outermost layer of your skin that's made up of various lipids, various fatty acids, uh, dead skin cells, and it forms this protective barrier over your skin. It prevents things from getting in, harmful free radicals, uh, bacteria, and it prevents water loss from getting out. So we don't wanna lose moisture, we wanna lock our moisture in. So I'm sure you can see why a damaged moisture barrier can cause a lot of skin problems. A damaged moisture barrier basically means your skin isn't equipped to deal with the insults that life throws at it. This means things that wouldn't usually upset your skin, things like high stress, things like a little bit of a stray from your diet, these can cause more problems than they usually would. Now our skin is actually quite amazing. Our bodies are quite amazing. We are capable of being resilient and recuperating from these damaging things that happen to us quite easily. Sometimes damage to the moisture barrier can be undone naturally by your body's mechanisms in five minutes to 24 hours. It really depends on what the injury to the moisture barrier was. So really our bodies have a great system to heal itself. However, if you're doing something that is damaging your moisture barrier and it's a constant in your life, whatever the issue is, we'll get into that later, if it's constantly happening, your, your moisture barrier isn't getting a chance to heal. And this is when we see these issues start popping up. So first things first, what are the signs of a damaged moisture barrier? How do I know if I have it? For the most part, I would say most of us probably use products that damage our moisture barrier, especially those of us with acne, because we're using products that may be effective for our acne, but they may not be so gentle on our skin. Some signs to look for if you think you might have a damaged moisture barrier are sensitivity, skin that is suddenly highly reactive, redness, a lot of inflammation, dryness, flaking, itching, tightness. Stinging is a big one. If you're putting a product on that isn't supposed to sting, like a moisturizer, and it stings, it's probably a good sign that you have a damaged moisture barrier. Some other things to consider are if you've tried new things in your routine that theoretically should work but are either not working or making your skin worse and you've tried diet and then lifestyle changes and nothing seems to be working to heal this itching, tightness, dryness, flakiness, you probably have a damaged moisture barrier. However, dryness itself isn't necessarily the only way that a damaged moisture barrier can manifest. You can still have these other symptoms, the sensitivity, the itchiness, the uncomfortability, the stinging, but your skin could be oily, overly oily. Keep in mind that most often, if you have any of these signs, they aren't just standalone issues. It's not, oh, I don't have a damaged, damaged moisture barrier, I have dry skin. Dry skin is usually a damaged moisture barrier. If your skin isn't retaining moisture the way it's supposed to, it, it means there's something wrong. So now that we know what a damaged moisture barrier can look like, we need to understand why it gets damaged in the first place. Knowing how to fix it, it's not as important as knowing how to prevent it. And sometimes prevention is the cure. Sometimes it takes stepping back from our routine and changing what we're using to actually fix the problem. And all it takes is one skincare product to ruin that moisture barrier. 
Depending on the types of products you're using, it could be a cleanser, which is a very common culprit when it comes to damaging a moisture barrier. It could be a toner. It could even be a moisturizer, but it could also be an acne product. Other lifestyle things that can damage our moisture barrier are things like smoking, things like sun damage, not wearing that sunscreen, doing things like over exfoliating, surefire way to damage your moisture barrier, things like over cleansing, over stimulating your skin, using too many products that are harsh and drying or irritating, trying to use a retinol at the same time as a benzoyl peroxide or trying to use an AHA and a retinol together. Bar soap is usually a big culprit. Not all bar soaps depending on the ingredients, but those kinds like Dove, that will definitely damage your moisture barrier because it's very stripping. Really harsh toners, um, things with alcohol in them, and even tap water that is too alkaline can damage your moisture barrier, so just water. The thing you need to know about your moisture barrier is pH is very important. So if you don't already know, pH stands for potential of hydrogen, and it's basically a scale of how acidic or basic or alkaline something is. And this only refers to aqueous solutions, so this won't refer to oils because oil, oils don't have a pH or they have a, a pH that is neutral. Skin's healthy pH level is really a range. There's not one set level that you need to stay at, but it's on the acidic side of the scale. So I've seen recommendations um, on the higher end around six, six and a half, Personally, I like to keep my skincare a little bit more acidic than that, around the four and a half to five and a half range. One of the reasons pH is so important for the overall health of your skin as well as the health of this moisture barrier is that because your skin is in a naturally acidic state, we need this acidity to prevent the growth of bad bacteria as well as promote the well-being of our host bacteria, our resident bacteria. So these are the microorganisms that protect our skin. So when our skin becomes too acidic that they can't survive or too alkaline that they can't survive, this promotes the proliferation of this bad bacteria. This is why I always stress how important it is to use products that promote the natural functions of the skin. I know this isn't always possible, Especially, you know, again, when you have acne and you're using products that may not be the best for your skin, but they are the best for your acne. So you have to weigh your pros and cons, but you also have to kind of help your skin along with using those products. So you have to kind of compensate for the damage that those products are doing. Which brings us to the bulk of our video today, which is how do I fix a damaged moisture barrier? I've checked off my list. I've got a damaged moisture barrier because I have these symptoms and I tried these products that I think may have damaged it. So I know I'm not going to use those products. What do I do now? What's the next step? So I've already said it, but step one should obviously be looking at your skincare products and asking yourself which ones are promoting the health and well-being of my skin and which ones are damaging it. And if you can, get rid of the ones that are damaging it. If it's a cleanser, get a better cleanser because there are a million cleansers and you don't need to be stuck to a cleanser that is stripping your skin. So if your cleanser um, dries your skin out or leaves your skin feeling tight and uncomfortable after washing, get rid of it. I love oil cleansers um, and then following that up with a pH balanced gentle cleanser. The oil will not um, disrupt the moisture barrier. If anything, it helps promote its overall strength and resilience and the pH balanced cleanser afterward will just get rid of all the other stuff the oil cleanser maybe didn't pick up, but it won't dry your skin out. However, if you have products like benzoyl peroxide that can potentially damage your moisture barrier with continued use, you just need to ask yourself, what can I do to compensate for this? This may mean um, trying to scale back use. So obviously the goal is to use your acne products or your active products as minimally as possible. So to the baseline, only what you need to use them for. And this goes for retinol products and this goes for um, AHAs and BHAs. You don't want to overuse these products. I mean, the results are amazing and you may want to use them constantly, 
but you need to give your skin a break. Some days you need to give your skin a break from those acid products and just give it some TLC. The next thing you can do is just get rid of anything in your skincare routine that is too alkaline. And a lot of people I know still use baking soda, um, getting rid of anything that's too acidic like lemon juice in your skincare routine. You don't need to make a mask with baking soda and lemon juice. I promise you there are well formulated products out there that do the same thing as lemon juice and baking soda but in a formula that is pH balanced or healthy for your skin. You need to find a gentle, gentle cleanser. Something that is pH balanced, non-stripping. It does not need to be more than that. It doesn't need to be treated. It doesn't have to be a salicylic acid wash just a basic, basic cleanser because all it's supposed to do is clean your skin and nothing else. Using an antioxidant serum, something again that's hydrating and something that's not irritating to follow up um, an acne medication or a treated product. Putting those antioxidants back on your skin is number one, creating another layer of protection on your skin, but it's also providing it with tools to be healthy using a hydrating, um, rich moisturizer, and really taking it easy on things like spot treatments. Less is always more when it comes to skincare, and I think that's where most of us go wrong, is we just put too much on our skin too fast, and a damaged moisture barrier happens. But a damaged moisture barrier is not forever. You are not doomed to be stuck with dry, flaky, itchy skin for the rest of your life. All you really need to do is have the right skincare routine and know what the triggers for your skin are. Then once you've fixed your moisture barrier, or once you're in a place where you feel like your moisture barrier is healthy, then you can kind of take that next step and start readdressing the other skin issues you have because it's very difficult to treat eczema or rosacea or acne or wrinkles or dark marks or melasma when you have a damaged moisture barrier because your skin isn't going to heal the way it is supposed to, it's not going to retain moisture the way it's supposed to, so it's really an issue that needs to be addressed before anything else in your routine. If you're looking for skincare products that you need to add to your routine, um, I'm going to give you a couple that I recommend, that I really love, and that I've used in the past, which have really helped me get past that hurdle of this damaged, compromised moisture barrier. Paula's Choice has a skincare, um, like this Calm line, and anything in their Calm line, and anything in most of their lines actually, are protective. They have these moisture barrier or skin enhancing ingredients. And so they have a moisturizer that's around an SPF 30. So it's a moisturizer and sunscreen in one. And it's super soothing and it helps really just give the skin exactly what it needs to repair itself. If you're looking for a cleanser, I recommend either the Cosarexa um, Good Morning pH Balanced Gel Cleanser. I use it personally and I absolutely adore Door it. However, there is also the Derma E. They have a gentle cleanser with hyaluronic acid, and there is also the Acura brand has a sensitive skin facial cleanser that I really enjoyed and that a lot of people I've recommended it to have enjoyed. Dermalogica also has a few great products for barrier repair. They have a ultra calming barrier repair cream, that's its name, and it's one of those products that you add into your routine, you know, at nighttime, and you'll notice in the, in the morning your skin is going to feel less irritated, less red, less dry. And one last recommendation that I have for you, something I've personally used and I've recommended it in the past, is using a phytoceramide supplement. Life Extension has a fantastic product with lipo wheat in it, and basically studies have found that our skin with a compromised moisture barrier has decreased levels of ceramides or ceramide production. And that by supplementing our diet as well as our skincare routine with ceramides can actually improve a damaged moisture barrier. So if I were to tell you to look for one ingredient in like a moisturizer or any other skincare product that is leave on, it would be ceramides. And since the Lipoweet uh, phytoceramide products help 
increase the levels of ceramide production. I would highly recommend it if you are kind of stuck and you're not really sure where else to turn. So that's today's video. I think that it's a tricky subject to understand at first, but really healing a damaged moisture barrier is very, very simple. So I hope that you found this kind of um, easy to understand and that you're not feeling overwhelmed with the task before you because it again it is so simple it's just we need to kind of be objective about the products we're using and yes I may love this product but is it doing what's best for my skin or is it causing these problems so don't feel overwhelmed because there are so many people dealing with the exact same thing that you're dealing with and you know everybody finds their way and one product may work for somebody but it may not work for somebody else so don't be discouraged if you're using a barrier repair product and it does nothing for your skin just move on to the next one There's a